Hello. It is a great pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you today about steel success. For most of my life, success has not really been the story in the steel industry in mature markets. In the US and Europe, the steel story overall has been one of struggle and decline. We've been undercut by cheaper competitors around the world, by larger and more efficient players in countries such as China, also aided by support from their governments. And we've been underinvested. Yes, there was some upturn after the financial crisis, but not enough and not sustained. We still face excess capacity, squeeze margins, and investment taking flight to parts of the world where there is substantial state support and costs are lower. Today, the pandemic has brought serious disruption and economic downturn. It feels like we have more problems than ever before. Some say we should give up. We should buy our steel from these other regions. I don't agree. I believe in steel success. I believe that's exactly what the future holds, both in Europe and the US, and that is why I am here. But that success won't look like what our sector looks like today. We won't achieve it by propping up a model that can't compete. I'm talking about something far more radical, a reinvention of our industry based on new technologies, new business models, and new ways of working together. It means turning what is currently the world's biggest carbon emitter into one of the cleanest low carbon industries. A sector that is sustainable, not just environmentally, but also commercially, providing the quality jobs that the young people want. So I'd like to talk to you about this future and how we can get there much faster than many people think. What will it take? What are the key technologies, the new ways of working? And what policy frameworks do we need from our governments? So first of all, why am I convinced that we have to be radical? The problem for today's steel sector is not just about demand, capacity or margins. It's not just the money. Making steel accounts for 9% of global carbon emissions. And demand for steel is set to double in the next 30 years because steel is essential. And yet, countries around the world are setting targets to become carbon neutral by 2050. Clearly, something has to give. Now, of course, different countries are taking different views on climate change. The US, for example, is not the same as Europe. But politics aside, across the world, the direction of travel is set. We are moving towards a carbon neutral world. Pressure will only grow. Demand for sustainably produced metals will grow. And regulation will intensify. Why? Because the young generation of consumers and voters is growing up demanding change. The steel industry simply cannot carry on doing what it has done for centuries. The question is not how long we can cling to the past. The question is who is going to lead this revolution? Who will build the new winning proposition? I believe this is a revolution that we in the West can lead. Europe and the US. This is what steel success means. And I'm not talking about the future. The revolution has already begun. We are in a race. Question is, who will lead this new industry? So the goal is to produce steel without carbon emissions, what we call green steel. And the key is technology, not just one technology. Green steel will differ around the world. Traditional carbon steel production is such a massive greenhouse gas emitter because it uses carbon in the form of coal in blast furnaces to strip the oxygen from iron oxide in the iron ore. The result is more carbon dioxide emitted than any other industry. So what's the alternative? We at GFG are pursuing two different models. For example, in Australia, where there is plenty of iron ore and perfect conditions of wind and solar, there we will use renewable energy to produce hydrogen from water. So we're building 
a 280 megawatt solar farm near our steel plant in Wyala in South Australia. This is already one of the largest in Australia, but behind this, we will next build a 3,000 megawatt solar farm. When finished, this will be the biggest and the cheapest in the world. We'll use that cheap, clean energy for hydrolysis to produce hydrogen from water. Hydrogen is the key. Hydrogen can replace coal in the steel making process. Hydrogen strips the oxygen from the iron ore and the waste product is clean water, no CO2 emissions. Incidentally, this also gets around a serious problem with using hydrogen in industrial processes. Hydrogen is expensive to store and to transport. It quickly becomes prohibitive. But if you produce hydrogen and feed it directly into a modern steel plant, you step around that problem. Instead of shipping hydrogen at great expense, you ship the green steel cheaply. So hydrogen steel is one technology. We see that working in places including Australia and in parts of Europe. Germany, for example, has already committed 9 billion euros to the development of hydrogen technologies. But in some countries, there's a simpler solution to producing green steel. In the UK and here in America, for example, steel has been produced and consumed for centuries. There are hundreds of millions of tons accumulated in our infrastructure, in our cars. Eventually, all of the steel needs to be scrapped. And there is a lot of it. Britain, for example, already generates more steel scrap than it needs to meet all its demand for fresh steel. And with the cost of renewable energy coming down, particularly from wind and solar, but also hydro and biomass, we can use clean energy to melt scrap into fresh steel in electric arc furnaces. And with new technology, we can literally melt steel when the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. And again, this generates very low carbon emissions. All of this requires capital investment and moving fast is expensive. We need scale to be competitive and to deliver returns on investments. And for me, that means consolidation. And that's exactly what we're doing. We have consolidated what we have already and we're pursuing more acquisitions at scale. A year ago, I announced the consolidation of all our international steel businesses into one company, the Liberty Steel Group, spanning 12 countries and with the capacity of over 20 million tons of finished steel products, the eighth largest outside China. This consolidation has given us efficiency, strength, and the right governance, all while keeping our entrepreneurial culture thriving. We're performing strongly in tough conditions and we'll continue with acquisitions. Last year, we bought Bayou Steel in Louisiana, and more recently, Hayanja Nascaval in France. And just a few days ago, I announced an indicative offer for ThyssenKrupp Steel. ThyssenKrupp is a pillar of German industry with a proud history. I understand how integral it is to the German industrial ecosystem and identity. I believe our businesses are highly complementary. We're closely aligned in assets and products, and we share the same values and beliefs about the future of steel. Together with this group, we can accelerate the transition to green steel. But consolidation on its own is not enough. We also need collaboration. I believe we're all going to need to work together in new ways, new partnerships that spread costs and accelerate change. It's a lesson the car industry has already learned. Faced with challenges of funding R&D in electrification and autonomous driving, businesses are cooperating, sharing investment costs. Examples, Ford and Volkswagen, Jaguar Land Rover and BMW, all working together in ways they would not have barely considered in the past. So our industry needs to collaborate, share knowledge, share costs, in joint ventures and alliances. What exactly these partnerships will look like, we don't know yet. It may be joint ventures, it may be shared R&D to refine new technologies. This is a chapter we all need to write together. And I'm keen to start writing and talk to potential partners.
And finally now, policy. If our sector wants to move fast and establish a lead, we need the right policy environment. Governments around the world are supporting these efforts. In the short term, we need stimulus to speed up the economic recovery. Steel is the building block of economies, quite literally. So spending on infrastructure will be an important part of the stimulus. And we're seeing examples around the world. From HS2 rail network in the UK to plans for multi-trillion programs here in the US. But even with these programs, this will be a short-term boost. In the longer term, we need policy incentives that support the reinvention I'm talking about. We operate here in the US, in Europe, in Asia, and in Australia. So I take a global long-term view. I can tell you that carbon emissions don't respect borders. So the perfect approach, what I call policy nirvana, would be a global, a global CO2 carbon price. But that's not likely right now. So without this carbon price nirvana, we need policies that give a competitive advantage to those players who move faster in this transition to low carbon steel. Policy needs to encourage innovation and problem solving, not protect a failed traditional model. However, rather than waiting for the right policies everywhere, we're challenging ourselves. A year ago, I announced Liberty Steel's commitment to be the world's first carbon neutral steel company by 2030, 20 years ahead of our peers. The carbon neutral 2030 target, what we call CN30, is now shaping everything we do. It draws together all our strategic ambitions, economic sustainability, social sustainability, and environmental sustainability. I believe it is how our industry can secure the ultimate prize, a profitable, sustainable, and competitive future. Using clean technologies to eliminate carbon emissions and lower costs through cleaner inputs and using scale and collaboration to accelerate change and build competitive advantages again. Now in conclusion, I hope I've shown you why I believe that there is only one thing that can deliver steel success. One way to save our sector. And it's not trying to prop up an old model that belongs to the past. It is wholesale reinvention. We can rebuild our industry in a new image based on new business models, new technologies, green technologies. If we want to lead this revolution and build a leading position, we need the right investments, we need consolidation, we need effective collaboration, and we need the right policy framework. And the price for economies and society is immense. Today, our children's generation looks at, looks at heavy industry and they're seeing something that's killing our planet. They're angry. They're out protesting in the streets around the world. But we have the chance to change our sector. We can pass on to them a steel industry they can be thankful for and even proud of. That will be true steel success. And we can all play our part in achieving this. Thank you.